This is the Recruitment Roller Coaster Podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz, and today I'm finally joined, this has been a long time coming, um, by Stephen Joseph, who is a business manager for Teacher Actives London branch. Yeah, thanks. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good. I think we can also say now you're an author. Uh, Yeah, apparently. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that happened. (laughs) So, Stephen's also the author of Secure, Survive, Thrive, which is a recruitment book. It is, yeah. Who would have known that you could create a podcast about recruitment and books about recruitment? Yeah, not me. Not many people would (laughs) think that there's that much to talk about. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) So, um... We're definitely going to dive into this, cool. which, is, which is really exciting. But as you, as you know, mate, what, what we're just talking about, where I always like to start is uh, how did Stephen Joseph get into recruitment, mate? Uh, okay, Please cool. do share. Yeah, so that's a long story, as they always are. But um, I was what I call a second jobber. So recruitment wasn't my first career. You know, yeah. um, I, I was in um, in the motor trade before part sales, and I did that for like 10 years. So um, had a whole career before. Ten years. Yeah, ten years. Car yeah. sales. Uh, part sales within the motor. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry, okay. So um, yeah, a whole ten years in a different sector. Hey, that is a long time. I know, right? So um, a long time. I worked mm. my way up and did all those kind of things. So unusually for most people, um, recruitment is usually either something they have at the beginning of their career. Yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. it was like a complete change, um, just because I hit kind of like the. Um, the financial ceiling and sure. felt like I could do more and obviously working around cars you have a lot of people coming in and out that are doing well for themselves and you see mm. you know people working in the city and you get kind of hearing about that where, kind where of was thing. You ba- where was you based? Uh, all over South East um, okay. South East London all the way up to sort of Kent and right, parts cool. like that so uh, many branches throughout South East they were quite a big group yeah. um, but um, in 1999 or 2000 uh, I got made redundant okay. um, the company collapsed and everything fell apart it was on them days when you walk in and someone hands you a slip and says you don't work here anymore is one of those situations yeah but um even though i'd been there and i built my whole career around that i was actually surprisingly positive about that day because i known that i needed to do something different mm. for a while and um i got kind of locked into a bubble of not doing anything about you it sort so of internally may have thought nah there's definitely there's definitely more yeah, to do, but 100%. like your circumstances helped you yeah 100 percent. yeah if, if that hadn't happened probably would have still done something similar because I enjoyed it a lot but there was just only so far you can yeah, take Yeah, especially it. when you've done something for a decade, mate. Yeah, exactly. Like, at that point, it's like, why, do you know what I mean? That's very difficult to think, I'm going to have to start something completely different. Yeah, yeah, and I was quite high up in the ranks there and, you know, yeah. I've done well for myself and had people Big working dog. for it. Yeah, medium dog. <laughs> <laughs> medium dog, yeah. Okay. Um, so after redundancy, I was like, okay, I definitely want to do something different. Um, unlike a lot of recruiters I'm not from an academic background you know I don't have a degree or anything like that so um, your options are less so sales is always a path for me Mm. Um, and I was quite drawn to obviously the bright lights of recruitment and the city and all that usual stuff so so what did you what was your exposure to recruitment and was it these people driving in uh, Range Rovers into uh, your branches well more more the jobs they did and people were working in but you know you look online for sales jobs and Mm. I was sort highest to lowest two pays what and (laughs) at the time recruitment came up as a big thing like the OT 100k plus uh, yeah it was still them days yeah Standard. um and obviously i was young and stupid <laughs> and <laughs> drawn in by that so okay and then and then so then you got into recruitment at that point yeah so after that um uh yeah it was a tough process for me not being your typical candidate not being a graduate mm. not being first jobber um i did not get a recruitment job easily it took time really? to get one you know lots of cv sending out and actually readdress my cv and change mm. my positioning on things um, and even then, um, when I got hired in my first job, which was a little boutique agency, um, even then they only gave me a one one month internship. Is all all they what? would give me. Yeah. So uh, one thousand uh, pounds flat. Um, for the first month. Yeah, for the first month, and they basically decide if they liked me or not. That's so mental. I know. So I didn't get an easy ride to begin with, but um, yeah. So that that's how it all started, and that's kind of been the the second chapter of the the career of my life. And then and then okay, and then just to help me out, just to set the scene. Yeah. How long have you worked at Teacher Active for? Uh, Teacher Active six years this year. Okay, six yeah. years, and then before that, and then four years or so in the boutique. Some, so it's about ten years now. So what they kept you after that a thousand pound? Yeah, they kept me on. Yeah, <laughs> so they hired a uh, uh, little. Obviously, everyone, a lot of people probably know this now, but they they part of their hiring strategy was always to hire five people mm. and later only keep two. So obviously, I had to find out how to compete for that. That was just their strategy. Uh, and three, they would give jobs to, and two, they would give internships to. This was just their their model, and uh, obviously, 
as I discussed so made it possible. later I learned out that I was a punt then that you know I wasn't even <laughs> enough to, to take a ride okay on. so you so you worked in recruitment for 10 and a bit years yeah right? 10 years now um, all education for me so yeah all education all education all temp all temp uh, obviously we do some perms but the education model is most predominantly you've been in the education temp market yeah and then you've got another decade under your belt yeah of another industry yeah mate yeah. so what so what would be always keen to get this like at that beginning yeah. stage like what so what, what did your perception of recruitment start to be then as you started to go through these processes like was you still really attracted to it like what made you persistent at that early stage yeah for me it was like the same thing that drove me to get into it and i did choose recruitment and like mm. most people at that point i was looking to get into it um it was the money obviously i was chasing money that wasn't real at that mm. point because did I you have any mates in recruitment no not at that point okay. i didn't know anyone so you, from that world yeah the, the stuff that you read online yeah okay yeah. and like obviously job every job board's 70 percent training consultant isn't it so yeah yeah, yeah. um okay. so yeah so i did want to get into it and i had all the stereotypical you know, views of you know flash suits and fine lunches and all that kind of thing, and uh, that what, that what was the high life, mate. Yeah, yeah, I always have done, mate. I'm still chasing it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so okay. that was my view of it before, and obviously, as you know, some of that was true, some of it not so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then, and was it was it sold to you like that as well when you was going through this process? Was it very much look, Stephen? Yeah, these lights that you're after, mate, they're real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all that hundred thousand pound salary, all the classic. Know. Yeah, all of that stuff, the cliche stuff, which yeah. I think we've mostly got away from now. Okay, we're still ripe then. So, why did you pick that agency out of interest? Uh, How come you ended it, up working? In all honesty, it? for me, it was more they were the one that gave me the chance. Really? And, yeah, it was. Uh, I you know, that. I was looking for an in. I, d- I definitely didn't set out to do education, although I didn't set out to do any. I was, mm. I was looking for a recruitment job, and it was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, anyone yeah. that would have me at that point and okay. work my way up. I've always been kind of someone that if I get a job. I know my worth. I'll, I'll prove myself when I'm in there and climb the ranks, kind of thing. So I wasn't too worried about that. But they, um, education was the first one to hit. And to be fair, they, they were they were a good bunch of guys. You know, they they were they they were good for what I needed at the time. How uh, so? How big was the agency at the time? Um, they were based out of Greenwich in South East London. They were uh, eight to ten people. Okay, yeah, similar size to what I joined. Yeah, then by the time you one left? one uh, one agency. By the time I left same you know they kind of churned oh, the same okay. they, they, the guys that owned it used to own a much bigger firm that they sold to Capita and this was their um, kind of second go at it but they kind of really lost their mojo it was much more of a lifestyle business fair enough okay yeah. and how were your first 12 months in recruitment I always like to horrible mate horrible really yeah horrible yeah um, why were they horrible mate um, just because I wasn't very good at it um, the pressures of the job the hours um not long after being there, I really understood how it all kind of worked and I was put on performance management and I got okay. the pressures of that and, you know, that, that image that you're going to come in and earn a lot of money and have them flash lunches and go to nice places and stuff and then the reality of, you know, I do 12 hours a day, bags under my eyes and, um, you know, not, not getting anywhere and can't catch a break from no one is... You know that that's that's not that's not good. <laughs> that's tough times. What did you? Yeah. What did you? What did you do at the beginning? Was you straight? I mean, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about the yeah. education market. Yeah. So, was you straight in there winning winning contracts? Winning yeah, business, ed- education in most vest? most branches in most sectors. Uh, sorry, in most uh, yeah. offices is pretty much the same format. Education's almost always three sixty. Um, and consultants obviously do candidate management. They do um, cold business. And did you do that from day one? Yeah, the role, the actual role of it hasn't changed much since I did it from the first day. Really? Yeah. So straight in the deep end. Yeah. Winning, winning clients. Yeah. Finding, to. finding temp teachers. Yeah. To get into these businesses. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So those first twelve months then. Yeah. Did you bill all right? Um, okay. Yeah. 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 I can't remember the numbers. I mean. Uh, enough to make it so that was that <laughs> but I think it helped that the colleagues that also started at the same time didn't do a lot so I was kind of the best yeah, yeah. of the bad bunch yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then after that I think you know just the commitment for I wasn't going to let it beat me and I was going to gonna get stuck yeah, into yeah. it what, what, um, what helped what, how did you get through that tough period then um, you know what it's, it's like everyone says you know you've got to you got to realize where you are um i think there's a lot everyone always says oh, I, I thought i was doing the right things at the time which i did i definitely wasn't sloping off or anything like that i was mm. i was doing my work but as you know like the, you can do your work and then you can do it in a different way or with a different yeah, attitude and, yeah just just get more stuck into it you know and i think once i'd really learned that and um i really started to ask the right questions and listen to the guidance i was be saying properly rather than just you know, think I was doing what I was being asked mm. to do and getting fully involved. 
um, then success started to come a little bit for me and then obviously you get more credibility from your bosses and your team leaders and stuff like that which helps and then spiral like the good spiral starts to happen Mm. and once that happened for me and it was a good 12 18 months in things actually start to put together quite quickly yeah yeah yeah. so someone that's going through a real tough patch right now yeah and they're early on yeah what 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 do you think they should be thinking about how like do you know what i mean what yeah uh, it depends on why doesn't it I think you know reflection's a real good thing yeah like have a good word with yourself am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing mm. how much of my heart am I putting into it mm. am I really listening to the guidance I've been told um, listening to the right guidance is a really good thing as well because recruiters are either one way or the other and if you've got a helpful bunch lots of people want to help but sometimes they're not giving you the right advice because mm. they're on the same level as you so a lot of people said it would you would you say to people like obviously listen yeah but take what you think's best of each person then sort of put your own spin on that yeah I think so but I think until you know enough about how to make those calls mm. I think you've really got to listen to a proven method yeah. assuming the method you listen to is by you know somebody that's built well and somebody knows what they're talking about because sometimes trainees all group together and they all help each other but they're all helping with bad advice you know what I mean <laughs> that happens a lot you know yeah. yeah okay so what was what was the journey in this uh, agency then mate so was it consultant then was you senior consultant was you yeah. managing a team by the time you left yeah what all that, that typical like? thing so consultant uh, I forget the titles then but nice. it was like senior and then uh, I think then I had a resourcer of my own and then I had um, I think I ended on divisional manager so I think I ran the secondary division for them mm. uh, which is probably about four or five guys looking after them and, and you did that in four years uh, yeah to be honest with you once I got my hurdles out of the way I got most of that in the second and third ish year that came quite quickly after getting really? my act together yeah okay yeah. so alright so before before we talk a bit about teacher active and that sort of mm-hmm. solid solid segment there like <clears throat> So you, so you just said you just said there that after you've got over that difficult period, that 12, 18 month period, like things start to happen quite quickly. Yeah. So, <clears throat> firstly, why do you think that is? Um, I think it's. I think I always think it's like effort. You know, I mean, I was doing the hours for sure. I mean, mm. I was still doing twelve hours a day every day, putting in the effort and the time. But I think how you spend that time can be very different. You know, you can have twelve hours full on head in. Or you can have 12 hours, which is really about two hours worth of work and mm. two hours of not really engaged. Um, so I think getting focused on the delivery or the results that matter. Um, well, so knowing what you need to spend time on. Which yeah, the just, just getting your head in it. You know, If you know there's certain things that are going to work, certain things that are not, and if you don't know, asking the right people, just getting into the detail quick. You know, If you're behind where you need to be, you need to speak to someone and say, you know, why, why am I off track? Really yeah. listen and get back on that track quickly. And I think if you can do that, assuming the guy that's guiding you has got the right the right stuff, which hopefully he has, then mm. things should turn quite quickly. So what would, you, what would you go back and do differently then if you were to start your, your recruitment career tomorrow? All, all of that, mate. Yeah, I mean, first thing I, I personally would do is make, I'd find out who the big biller was and sit next to him. I think that'd really? be, anyone out there that has is in the situation, get as close as you can to the top performers because they will rub off on you, you will hear things, you will follow their attitude and, and that that would be something that's... Um, what that's, if you haven't got a big biller in your office, mate? If you haven't got a big biller, then I guess you've got to reach out to mentors and stuff mm. like that outside of the group, LinkedIn. Did you ever know. do that? Uh, not at that point, no. I mean, I was quite lucky that, there, like a lot of these small firms, there was one or two guys that had been there forever billing loads and mm. then the rest were just on the churn. So. And were these people willing to help? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yes, to begin with, but like everything, like, like I always say, like... Um, if you keep asking and you keep get giving advice and then you keep not take not yeah. taking it or not applying it properly, yeah, they're going to get annoyed. Yeah, they turn the tap off, don't they? After a while, and I really felt that you, you're back turning. You're like you know, eventually they say, "Mate, you know, you figure it out," kind of thing. Really? Like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> I thought we were mates, you know. Um, and that's right, probably because you can only teach people so much, can't you? If yeah, they're not, yeah, yeah. Um, if they're not listening, but um, yeah, if you certainly if you've got a big biller or a top performer, or if not, then you've got a director or someone in your office. Then you know. I don't mean in an arse licky way, but I think if these guys have done the things mm. you've done, you can gravitate right, around I think, them. And I think it's sound advice. Yeah, I, I do. That, I do honestly think. And it I is, think yeah. don't. Yeah, don't. Don't sort of be scared to to ask for yeah. help. Yeah. Because a lot of people may be worried about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's right. You mean you ask for help and then obviously follow the guidance and yeah, and apply it. Yeah. And then get your head in. I think a lot of employers will give you a lot of credibility, a lot of rope if they see you really putting your back into it. And I've heard your story mm. a few times. You were grafting mm. yeah. when you weren't billing. Like you, you know they could. You get a lot of rope for that, I think. Especially in that top, especially yeah. in that top of size business, like yeah. you can't hide. No, no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay. So, 
teacher active just quickly just just yeah. cut me out um obviously how many people do you manage now um my direct management now is a team of 12 14 12 to 14 people yeah. yeah yeah and you built that up over over six years five five six years yeah five, six five years, and a half yeah. years now yeah yeah okay all right before before we go into that management piece mm-hmm. j- just out just um i'd love to get your thoughts on um so being a temp recruiter yep what i only did perm yeah so like in your obviously now i've seen obviously the the, the temp recruits come through and the, and the yep. people take on and this whole period yep. like what are the sort of common mistakes and and things that temp recruiters do typically do at the, the beginning of their recruitment journey which i'm sure you did yeah um i think if you're a temp recruiter i mean i know certainly on perms you you know you're always after jobs and stuff like mm. that but in temp there's never a shortage of jobs you know really? never a shortage of jobs so i think sometimes you can get too hung on to jobs you can't fill mm. um and you've obviously got to work very closely with your candidate base because you can have a role or a candidate but unless they're the right role the right candidate you still don't have a deal so mm. i think you know knowing to put enough graft into the right roles when it when it's covered cover it when you can't cover it do something about it but then stick it on the back burner and you've you got to work a lot more in your cycle you know you've got to make sure you've always got pipeline coming through both candidate and client mm. um and then you've got to run through them and then eventually you get some match up you know you get a client a candidate match up with a client job and yeah, yeah. vice versa and then once you've got some clients on board obviously you can start to build the kind of availability they need around them in education is you know it's geographical to a certain degree um you can build availability for them and then you can go back and ask for more kind of thing but in the early days like everybody just begging for any bit of work you can get because you're after some days we have in, a, in education mark rather than um gp but um to get some days on the board um you want to get anything you can fix but later on you start to learn to work on the right stuff and put the right so level so of what, attention so you're saying people st- people putting too much effort into jobs that typically aren't going to... Yeah, either jobs they can't fill or they work on a job for too long that's not been, you know, it's not likely to fill very easily, which means they could have brought on five jobs that would have been easier to fill in the same space. So I think, you know, I was liking it to like plate spinning, you know, like the the plates on the, Mm. the... the sticks mm. like you have to give you got to lock things up in the air and then you give them a little twist yeah, and you keep yeah. on with it and then you touch something else and do stuff like that and then if you can't fill that particular job now um, but you've got an ad out you've got some searches out for it you know either that same job will come back around in a few weeks or or a similar mm. job somewhere else so you've got to always juggle your candidates and your clients so i think you've got to do as enough candidate work at the same time as enough client work and then you've got to start putting them together. You know, I think yeah, yeah, and that yeah. sounds really vague, but it's, it's kind of an art to get everything moving. And once you've got that machine right, then you want a billing machine, aren't you? And that's why as a temp recruiter, if, once you get it right, you can do quite well, quite quickly, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so so it, it, typically what will, what people fall short on quite early or what people will um, experience as a challenge is, yeah, balancing the, yeah. the client work, the candidate work. Yeah. So business development in the temp context, Yeah. how difficult is that? Um, well, you get both sides, haven't you? I mean, it's it's definitely difficult, especially in education. It's an old market. It's established. Yeah. It's very mature, which is reliable and stable. So it's a good business. But you to know, get in. yeah. But I mean, public sector generally, you know, public sector money they don't really like change. The creatures mm. of habit. So to to wing a new client on board when seemingly every agency is the same is yeah. is tricky. But um, I go back to like the the basics for me is like when there's a sea of average recruiters if you're half decent it's very easy to stand out yeah you know and making sure you've got some value in everything you say to your client making sure you never pick up the phone without some purpose and making sure you have a clear message when when you dial even from the early days is mm. easily stands you apart from you know there's a lot of consultants coming through all the time that are really mm. poorly trained and really because I can, I can imagine in the temp world again correct me if i'm wrong but yeah. like can really just be like w- really transactional Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. It's uh, it's best fit a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's literally like, Stephen, like, are you available? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm available. Yeah. Have you got this uh, yeah. qualification? Can you do this? But yeah, 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 I can. Can you do Friday till Sunday, whatever? Yeah. Like, Bosch done to next one. Yeah, yeah. Is it literally like that sometimes? Yeah, even within an hour sometimes. Man. We need someone for one hour and forty five minutes. So and all that help. Obviously, there's an element of that person being suitable but is it more literally on Steve yeah. have you got the right credentials to do this job it, it depends on both doesn't it I mean it depends on what you need for a short term thing 
most of the time they're looking for obviously they have to be a certain standard mm. to do the job but beyond that it's can you deliver can you get someone to me in 45 minutes mm. which obviously is led about availability and the work you've done before that um, and then about your organisation have you prepped them will they be at, will they pick up the phone if you ring do you have a relationship yeah. with them I think it's quite unique I think education and maybe medical are a bit like that but other yeah. than that I think it's quite they're the only ones that work yeah, yeah. like that, so that I know of but how just on this topic I'm, hmm. I'm interested again you can talk about teacher active and how you yeah. cultivate it there but like if that if that's lit- if that's literally the case in terms of the relationships that for, yeah. in your world teachers have with recruiters yeah like how can you how can you start cultivating more of a relationship focused approach do you know what I mean yeah well because well, cause like I can carry on doing what I'm doing yeah and like it's gonna it's gonna work right because if I call the right person they can do the job then yeah I'm going to make money, but like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, well, in, in in our market, at least, where there's so much demand, I mean, most most clients, in our case, schools will um, probably have at least two or three agencies as their go-tos and maybe two or three on reserve after that. So if somebody's priority one agency in that, um, there's always a period when they're going to drop the ball, someone's mm. late, someone's not up to standard. Basically, there's sometimes you've got to say, no, do you know what, today our standard is not where it needs to be. I'm not going to feel that today. Go call somebody else because I'd rather you know that mm. than me send someone that I think might not do a good job. And that's so powerful, mate. If you say mm. to him, look, I've got a guy, but you know he's not my number one, so you'll call whatever. Often they'll take it anyway, but at least you're getting that um, trust with the client to say, mm. I won't just send anything ever. But inevitably, when it's peak, it's busy, especially for us, the winter seasons and stuff like that. People make bad calls, we all do, and it's that time when they've made a bad call that you can make a better call or your availability can be stronger than theirs and you can get a chance over them and then it's like, okay, they might use you both equally and then, you know, everyone's... Mm. It's always like the stock market, like someone's always moving up and down. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And then what about... I'm just, I'm just thinking like that, like how light, especially in your market then, like yeah. how, how quick is there? Like, is it like mental? In uh, terms yeah, of like, can, you can yeah, get a I call mean, on like 8 a.m. Yeah, like I mean, Stephen, it, I need 10 teachers. We're, we're as you probably know, uh, education, most of us in early. We're in at least from 6.37 in the morning. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're early doors, mate. You know, before the sun's up, we're up and in the office. And um, and in that period, we might send out, you know, 30, 40, 50 workers on their way within, within an hour and a half. So, That's um, so, yeah, you can imagine. You've got to get, you know, you don't know where the jobs are coming from. You don't know where the candidates are. You've got travel to deal with. You've got all sorts of things. So... You need a prepared workforce. You need to be able to get to the point where you can expect a certain amount of work. You know, obviously, yeah. as you've been in the, in the game for a long while, you know certain clients will call you. They'll have certain levels of requirements. But um, you know, if the, if the snow should hit, or if you yeah. know the the flu bugs going around or something, then there's only so much you can do. So, um, so a lot of it is about organisation in this job because you need to you always need to be ready to fill the jobs before you've got the jobs almost. So, mm. so and that and that's and that's down to cultivating and having a living and breathing candidate pool yeah always a live database that you speak to daily you know you've got to you've got to stay on top of everything so and obviously there's medium and long term stuff as well yeah, yeah. so like, so like I'm just thinking stuff. now if I'm listening if I'm, a, if I'm a temp recruit right now what, what you're saying is all great makes sense now if I'm a temp recruit right now and I'm like right I'm like how how, how can I as, a, as you said it, it, you can stand out quite easily because there, yeah. there's a lot of shit recruiters out there yeah. right particularly I can imagine I mean, obviously, yeah, it, it has that reputation, but I can I can just imagine in the in the temp landscape, it's yeah. just so easy just to be transactional. So, like, yeah. if I'm listening right now, and I'm a temp recruiter, what what's your advice for you to to start really cultivating that candidate pool and those authentic yeah. relationships with these candidates? Because ultimately, that's that's what's going to stand you against. Yeah. I think you know when when the clients ask, you need you can't deliver unless you have a candidate base. So your candidate base is important, like you'd imagine. Um, your candidate base will only go further for you, work at the rate you've got, yeah. work at a different job. If, you've got if they know you, if they trust you. Same exactly. as always, yeah. You've got you to speak to them at the times, you know, when you haven't given them work or when, you know, even if things haven't gone well, you know, sometimes temps don't, don't do what they're supposed to do. They mess up the job. You need to tell them that. You need to address that in the right way. But obviously you still need to, you know, you need to address the issue with them, but you still want to give them respect so otherwise they'll just send you the voicemail the next day and that's it, game over. So you've got to find a way, obviously, of keeping your workforce happy and working, first of all, and then secondly, you know, paying them well or paying them right, looking after them, mm. going the extra mile for them where you can. And I think, like anything, you know, humans are inherently good. If you do good things with good people, they'll do the same back to you, I think. And how, again, I'm thinking, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. temp market, like how vulnerable is a temp recruit right now for their competitor to ring up one of your teachers, let's say, and say, Stephen, look, 
Yeah. I know we don't always work together, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But I've got this job and it's paying 10 quid an hour more than Stephen. I know you work with Stephen, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I just said Stephen twice there, but Stephen's yeah. a teacher and yeah, Stephen's popular. a recruiter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, how vulnerable yeah. are you to that? Um, yeah, in in the in the in more the demand parts of the job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's very real. I mean, most people, I think, in any job, won't move for just money alone. So I think, unless how can you avoid, you, how can you avoid being vulnerable to that? That's what I'm trying to get. Um, like I think you know, like always, place people in a job, then enjoy it at a fair or appropriate, sensible. So, rate it's, so it's more difficult for them to make the decision to live. Yeah, of Good course, point. yeah, yeah. And the same, if you've got a suitable job for them, if they're not travelling five hours away because you've wedged someone yeah, into yeah. a role that, you, you know, is no good to so them. Yeah, if you've got your yeah. temp crews in a decent job that they're happy yeah. with, they're yeah. going to be less susceptible to, hi, Stephen, the yeah. teacher, I've got a job that's paying 30 quid an hour more, are yeah. you open to it? Yeah. Well, actually, no, I'm in a really good job. Okay. Yeah, and equally, like, if, you know, if, if as a temp agency, we need our candidates and they need us, you know, because they know their assignment's only going to run for so long. So mm. they also, if you've done a good job, don't want to spoil their relationship with you. And don't get me wrong, they've got to work and they've got to pay their bills, so that's always going to be first. But if they can keep that relationship with you and, you know, sometimes they'll come to you and say, look, I've been offered this job or whatever, it does pay more. And, you know, you can just be real with them and say, you know what, give me a week's notice, that might work better for you. It's better if that's the case, go do that. I'll get, you know, come back to me when that's finished, we'll get you back on board. Or sometimes you can say, look, don't worry, I'll speak to the clients if we can get you some more or... I can't do that in this case. But again, it's like that relationship and it's like, if you're honest and open with them, they as long as you got got that with them, they will be with you, and hopefully they'll come to you and tell you that. That's what I mean. How can you get to that, though, mate? I There's think got to be a bit more there. I feel like no. I think it's, you, just, yeah. it's just it's just treating people with respect. You know, calling them back, letting them know. Mm. You know, I know it's all very basic stuff, but it usually is, isn't it? It's like mm. you know, making sure you speak to me at the end of the day. How they got on? How was the assignment? Understanding their requirements, really, what kind of yeah, job yeah. do they want to go? Um, making sure you pay right. I mean, I was definitely guilty in my very early days in my last firm of you know focusing on margin too much and not necessarily focusing on the right job for the right person which that happens isn't it if you do that soon enough your workforce will disappear and, and rightly so and, and j- just help me understand yeah bit of a simple question but yeah. so when you when you say that you're saying that you're more focused on making sure that you was making more money out yeah. of the relationship yeah necessarily than making sure that the teacher was getting the most that they possibly could. Yeah, is that in the fair? early days, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but is that, and that's something that obviously people are quite prone to. Oh, to yeah, do 100%. That. Yeah, I mean, like so, most so that, of us. So that's yeah. because yeah. typically, just, just so it's like crystal clear, right? Yeah. Just because there might be a lot of permanent recruits listening, yeah. right? It's like, so St- Stephen, I've got this job. Yeah. We'll pay this, this, yeah. and we'll pay X. Yeah. And then you'll find a teacher. Yeah, so uh, obviously it depends on the, the nature of the job and who can do it, obviously. But if, if, you're, if your charge rate is fixed, which sometimes it is, sometimes it's variable, uh, but your pay rate is flexible okay, uh, and a either very inexperienced or a very experienced candidate could do it, obviously they have different pay expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they obviously won't be able to do the job to the same level, but sometimes that job doesn't need that full experience. So, yeah, I mean, you can choose in that situation to impress your client with a with a winner of a candidate that's going to do a great job or you can choose some more margin and that's always the, the balance. Or, the balance, yeah. Yeah, or more realistically, it's about the quality of your availability at that point. But, you know, that, yeah. that is a task. And if you're on if you're on the quick win scenario, like a lot of us are in the early days, you can make those calls really wrong. Really focus on the margin. Yeah, and I think when you, when you don't do that, you know, of recent, uh, well, recent many years since I learned the game and now I train people, you know, I always say, you know, pay people a fair wage for doing a fair job. And that's not just cliche stuff. It's yeah, just, yeah. it's common sense. Okay, that was you pay people good question. rate. So yeah. You said, yeah, no, I, I, okay. That, I think that's really useful. Yeah. So then, so that was going to be my next question. Like, yeah. someone that maybe is susceptible to that. Yeah. And that, that could be a real reason as to why yeah. they're maybe losing candidates yeah. to their com- competitors and stuff. Yeah. Like, how, how, yeah, how can, how can someone start approaching that then? Literally just just be really mindful of, well, are yeah. they getting the pay the fair? Am I... Yeah, you know right I mean? at the beginning, off the cusp, you know, how much do you need? What did you what did you earn previously? Yeah. Is that in line with what they should be? Because sometimes you might have caught them from an agency where they were well underpaying them, in which case, if you can put them right, you should. That's the good, that's a good time to do that, you know? Yeah. Put the pay, pay area right. Let them know that as well. Um, if you manage to go sh- negotiate a little bit more than they perhaps normally should have done, mm. again, so can let them know that. You know, if their if their pay rate should be X and you manage to get them yeah. Y, tell them that you've done that for yeah. them. And you know, you can't expect people to know the market. So, so, I think- so it's, it sounds like a lot of a lot of like really making sure that you've got that um, reliable living and breathing candidate pool. Yeah, kind of down yeah. to being honest and like yeah, it's, it always because I'm assuming that a lot of your competitors are very susceptible to not being that because. 
Do you know what I mean? It's just a lot. You yeah. just go, right, bang that in. I know what the margin is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it, I can imagine also it can be very easy to be like, you make that placement and it's like, oh my God, the margin on that is fucking wicked. Yeah. I'm like absolutely buzzing off that. But and then like you just long term, yeah. way susceptible to like, you've just way underpaid that person or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And obviously that, that can happen. I mean, there's good and bad in every agency like, like, like you know. I mean, the good, the guys that are doing good or have done good for a long period have learned these lessons a long time ago, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you you gotta you gotta pay well, and I, I do believe in in charging well as well. If you've done a good job, you've done a good service for your client, I think you know you should yeah, be rewarded too yeah. as well. Yeah. So in a candidate led market, I think you know you could push that on the client if you want the more margin rather than on, on the, the uh, on the candidates candidate. because candidates will just walk elsewhere, or even if they don't, they put up with it till the assignment's finished. Mm. And you'll never hear from them again. So mm. um, there's no there's no longevity in that, is there? You know? Okay. That's my thoughts anyway. Yeah, so before we get on to the management piece, because I feel yeah. like there definitely would have been some learnings in that yeah. for, throughout your career. Again, I'm thinking of like how 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 do you help your team now then? Yeah. And how did you help yourself yeah. become better at spinning these plates? Because I can, I can imagine like, because what was like the peak time, I don't know, the peak time that you had X amount of people out working for you? Yeah. Would you say like, what, what time of year for us no as in like let, I don't know like I don't know if it's on a day or a weekly where you have yeah. like, I don't know, 80 people out working yeah. under Stephen do you know what I mean yeah like how how did, how have you got better at managing you, those I mean, plates uh, do you know what mate like a lot of that is if you set it up right in the beginning that's much easier you know yeah. if yeah if you get good people into suitable roles and you can't always do that but as suitable as possible yeah. you're paying them well the candidate's happy the client's happy you have far less problems you yeah. know if you're if you're skimping on everything and you're trying to wedge square pegs into round yeah, holes yeah, yeah. every single week something's going wrong something's <laughs> dropping out you're backfilling you know yeah. and you can't get you can't build a desk like that you, you you get to a certain number whatever that is and then you're going up 10 down 10 up 10 down 10 because always something's dropping off so um, and that's because what did you say sorry because they haven't got things in order at the beginning yeah because you know somebody's walking out because you haven't paid them right or yeah, you know yeah. a client saying this is too much we've dropped it or someone's got poached from yeah. someone all of those things happen if you've not done them foundations right so okay, I think that makes sense. having good principles about uh, this is how I want to run my desk or if you're yeah, yeah, your own yeah. business how, as how we run our business and that and stops all of that, a lot yeah and yeah, all yeah, of that I mean, contributes to you being able to manage your day better because there's yeah, less of course, those, yeah, there's there's less there's those fires yeah, putting yeah. out yeah I mean you still have problems the bigger the, the bigger your workforce gets you know, people do want to leave, people move, mm. change on, that's normal, but they're informed. And if they're in that, you know, planning stage, I, you know, I want to move in on a new job, I want to find, I want to leave this, they give you time. Whereas if it's on fire, they're telling you I'm walking out now or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get much less reaction. So uh, most temp recruiters learn early on, you know, those kind of shortcuts just lend you to more headache and you can't build a successful de desk like that. So, um, you know, looking after people, paying them right and um, being in good communication, like if, you know, if feedback from the client is that they've, you know, they're not on point or they've not been right, then make sure you feed that back because the yeah. client wants you to say that. But obviously, you've got to be diplomatic about how you say it because you want them to acknowledge it but not upset them. You know, it's just, how, how do you help people structure their day then? Like, because I'm sure that's got to be on point. You said you've got to be yeah, organized and stuff. Like how, so how, how do you sort of help your guys now and throughout your career? How have you sort of structured your day to give you the best possible chance of... Yeah, obviously that's, that like? yeah, that's really important for any temp worker, especially in us in education. So um, our market lends itself quite comfortably to that because there's certain actions that take place at certain days. So okay. for us, we have uh, a kind of core way of working X amount of time is this, X amount of time is that. Yeah. So everybody works in that, which gives us energy in the room when it's sales time or on the so phone. So what are you talking, help me out, blocked out time? Yeah, blocked out time activities. for certain activities, blocked out time How long are these blocked out times typically? Depends who they are, you know, a couple of hours on the phone, hour for admin, a couple of hours back on the phone. And everyone does that at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Typically? Reasonably structured, yeah, because um, one, it gets, it drives efficiency, like you're kind of forced to be reasonably efficient. And two, certainly with the phone time, you know, no one wants to make calls in a dead environment. You know, you mm. want to feed off everyone's energy. And if you're saying, okay, right, everybody's on the phone from X to X, then you get yeah. that energy lift in the room and the yeah, vibe yeah, that comes yeah. off that. If it's winning, then it feels good. So, so how, how does that typically help your team then? You said efficient there. Is that actually generally... Yeah, I mean, that, that takes the planning away from you to a degree. So I think, yeah, you know, if you've got to do X in X time, then that gives you a window, doesn't it? You've got to mm. get that done. And because everyone else is doing it around you at those times as well. So those kind of things are, are forced to get the core activities because as a 360 recruit in a temp market there's lots of plates to spin yeah, like yeah, I say yeah. so you've got to um, you've got to stay on top of them by by helping your team by giving them the best structure yeah uh, but outside of that me personally I'm in the guys now you know like everybody like lists and making sure 
you, you're on top of things. You know, I, I personally, by the rule, um, I think it's from Jim, Jim Rohn, like, um, never start the day before you have it finished, which is like, I love these little cliches and things, yeah, but yeah. I think it's I really like good. That. Like, be, like before I leave every day, I know what are my, what are my main things I need to get done tomorrow in amongst the normal activities. Um, and then as long as I can get them done, then I know I've got what, like you, what you prioritize tasks. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause yeah. obviously watching the office, participating in the stuff and taking care of my own stuff, you need to make sure, you know, yeah. otherwise a bad day can, can wipe your whole day out, can't it? So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so making sure you've got your, your priorities right. Um, for me personally, like keeping them to no more than four or five things and making yeah. sure that there's plenty of, um, it's gone wrong room because stuff inevitably will go wrong. So you yeah, need, yeah. you need a bit of space to deal with each okay. of the day. So, you know? so if I'm listening right now, if, if I'm a, a temp, temp recruiter, I'm a manager, mm-hmm. managing a, a temp recruitment team. I mean, this is obviously applicable to, Someone who's a perm recruiter or whatever, but yeah, what, some, what yeah. you what you what you've really seen? I've experienced this myself when I was in recruitment, and yeah. everyone sort of sporadically did business development, but yeah. never made the decision to do like the typical core hours, and, yeah. and it definitely helps, especially yeah. when you're in a smaller environment yeah. where everyone's yeah. on the phone. It does drive energy, blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. So that you, so yeah, if you're listening right now, and there is everyone's got their own structure, whatever. Yeah think about how you can weave in a team structure that actually benefits yeah. everyone because it enables everyone to focus on what you should know are key activities that yeah. drive the outcomes that you want for your team and yourself. Yeah. 100% mate. I think, you know, I, I do think, I mean, I've always been temp, but I do think that kind of structure works well for temp or perm. Maybe you're in a, in a job-led mm. market, maybe you're in a candidate-led mm. market, but whatever the activity is, if you can get a certain routine where that has to happen, you do it as a yeah. team that's fairly non-negotiable, then you drive that energy, you drive that activity, yeah, yeah. success, how, how success. How strict you know? are you with that? Because I, I can remember, really like, because that, that must yeah. be, because that's a process as well. Because, like, let's say tomorrow, you're like, yeah. right, guys, like, let's say you haven't done it before, but right, yeah. guys, from 7 till 9, 9 a.m., yeah. all we're doing is speaking to teachers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but and then you've got Tom in your team who's yeah. like, Stephen, mate, I've got to get this CV out, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, how strict, how strict yeah. do you be with it? Uh, pretty strict. I mean, if you didn't know, you could set your watch by it. So it's pretty mm. strict in the office, but like, like anything, you know, if you're an experienced recruiter, I'll trust your judgment to know that CV needs to go now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm not going to tell our top producers yeah, yeah, how course. to do it. So that's fine. But other than those, um, really strict. Be because, disciplined. Yeah. Because uh, you let like one person. Yeah, yeah 100%. Goodbye. And usually they're trying to send a CV that, you know, it's got to be sent now, right. but they won't look at it for five hours anyway. So it really doesn't have to yeah, be sent yeah, now. Yeah. So unless their judgment is on point to be able to make sure yeah. that is the right be point. willing to challenge it and go look yeah, Stephen yeah. I understand but can that wait yeah usually, can you send that after is it going to have a room if plan? you're in a two hour period and you're saying you're midway like will it really make a difference if you send it in one hour's yeah. time most of the time the answer mm. is no and if they're genuinely if it's the right candidate with the right job mm. and they're literally about to go and look at it right now then of course send it it doesn't make you know we're not trying to win any egos it's just trying to bring, bring efficiency but um yeah, so to answer your question, pretty regimented, but with a with sense. some degree okay. of a. So, management. Yeah. Continuing your billings. Yeah. It's a lot more plates to deal with that, isn't it? Yeah, ain't it? Yeah, so it's a lot easier <laughs> billing. Yeah. So. So let's yeah. talk a bit about that journey, mate. So yeah. I think I remember seeing your LinkedIn post not a while back yeah. saying that. In the t- correct me if I'm wrong, but your branch was like one of the highest performers at one point yeah. in the year, yeah. right? So yeah, we won branch of the year and top biller, and we we had a good year last year. We won pretty much everything in our annual awards. Okay. This year we won, you know, half top producers and stuff. So let's unpack that. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Like, what? What? If I'm listening right now, I'm, I'm a manager, or whatever. Like, yeah. What were the What were the sort of like <clears throat> core failures that you were making that you re- recognised? That, that obviously enabled you to become a better manager and, mm. and achieve these things. Of, like any, any sort of key <coughs> failures that you're like, if I knew that, whatever, that would be yeah, really useful. Yeah, I think um, if, if you're building a team like me, obviously the hires you buy, when you buy them and how they fit in the team, um, how you support them, how long you keep them, they're the real driving factors in the early days um, about getting headcount in, obviously, and then the right headcount, mm. which is way more important than headcount. Um, and then after that, that that C word, that culture, you know, mm. you either have a winning culture where everybody chips in and a lot of the work's done for you, or you have a, a miserable culture where you're putting out fires left, right, and centre. So, mm. and I've got that right and wrong both times over the over mm. the years, you know. But like everything, the, the more time you do it, you, you learn from the mistakes you make. You know, you know, you can definitely get too invested in sometimes in personal 
relationships with people that you really like that just aren't going to make it and mm. you, I genuinely believe you do you do them a disjustice to service if you drag them on for months and months and months yeah. they're not going to make it so being real with people about where they are uh, but then also sometimes people that really can make it that aren't putting the right work in having the right chats with them um, keeping them on board you know and, and progressing them along I fully believe um, as a sales manager you should be speaking to your team regularly, if not daily. How do you structure it? Um, as you know, you might have a session, uh, a whiteboard session. You might top and tail the session before the call session. You What's know, a whiteboard session. Uh, just maybe get everybody in the boardroom. Let's talk over some topics, some challenges people are having. You know, okay, nice. I might lead that. I might get them to lead that sometimes. Let How often do you do that? Uh, weekly, I'd do that personally. Um, as it's what, are the, what are the typical things that you'd go over in that? Because that's interesting. Uh, no one's actually said that. Yeah, it might be that maybe. Um, People are struggling to get to a certain level in the sale. Maybe they're certain to shortlist. Might maybe be key objections. Yeah, common objections. Key objections come up quite a lot. Beating gatekeepers and yeah. you know those kind of all common stuff really. And sometimes it's the same stuff over and over again. Okay. Sometimes it's the same answer package the same way. Sometimes I'll even let each other answer mm. it. But I think having them regular training sessions and certainly if you're in if your type of business has to do a lot of call volume, I think topping and tailing the sessions. What do you mean by topping and tailing? Uh, before the session starts dress the floor, you know, set up objectives, what we're going to do, if there's something seasonal in the market, you know, um, as is quite predictable, there's busy periods and slow mm. periods and resignation windows and stuff like that. Yeah. So letting your team know about that, obviously some experienced guys will know about that a lot, mm. some won't. Um, if it's needed, set individual objectives, you know, keep, keep it energy, keep, keep the energy mm. fresh, keep objectives new. Um, and then the key thing is obviously the golden rule, which managers don't learn too too late is, is follow up after, you know, it's, you it's it like it's all well and good setting up a session, but you've got to close the session. You know, if it's you're setting up, tail part. yeah, you've got to tell it. You've got to say, okay, well, this is what we said we were going to do. Go around That's each of them. How did you did you do it? Did you not? And so obviously, some will have been successful, some will have been not. Some will be hiding under the desk, hoping you don't point at them, asking them. That's and, so true. Yeah, but if you're not called to objective, and this is even you know even for me and everyone else, if you're not asked at the end of it, well, did you do it, mate? Um, you know, then there's no consequence, is there? Not that I'm trying to say it's like no, no, shoot, but, but no it does to hold you to account. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, you only without got your help. Yeah, so I think if you're running uh, call sessions, at least topping and tailing the sessions in the busy periods, letting people so know how objectives that, are. No, I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Non, non shared that. So yeah, give me just to help people listening. Like, so you said about the objectives. I really like that. That's yeah. cool. I, I'm thinking actually, that's really interesting. You say yeah. that because if I think of, I remember a few times where my old director yeah. he would he would show he would share with us that he hasn't been quite happy with the business development yeah. sessions and the energy yeah. isn't quite right blah blah yeah. but that would be after three or four sessions if that makes does that make yeah. sense yeah, so yeah. i think that's a really interesting point yeah. you said so just break it down simply like a typical tailing of a session or the yeah. closing of a session would be what exactly like would you uh, then get, communicate to everyone at the same time yeah or? so it depends obviously like obviously it depends if there's but individual depends or whatever but kind of thing. but let's say um let's say activities to help you know which can happen sometimes yeah. um if there's opportunity let's get some fun let's get some energy into it let's yeah. create a game or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. uh and then let's set up what we want to do yeah. communally everybody and then as the session goes on, we'll let go there. Typically, if you've got a two-hour session, you might want to touch on it halfway, yeah, let yeah. people how they're going. Uh, and then the back end of it, if you've got a big team, you're not going to go through everyone one by one, but you want to pick out one or two people. You usually got an eye who's done it, who hasn't. Yeah. Pick out a couple of successes so the guys can see the benefit of what you're mm. doing. Pick out one or two failures and ask them what they've learned. You know, we don't want it in a, in a negative way, but so they can see all oh, right, you know what, I really didn't do quite yeah. what I was asked. Some other guys did. They got some value out of it. And, you know, they can, and you, you work around your group like that. I think that's a good way of managing a large team, you know? No, I like that. Interesting. So you mentioned culture. Yeah. How have you got better at nailing that? Because I'm sure... I you've love gone... culture, mate. It's, uh, you know, yeah. other than recruitment, it's like one of the things that fascinates me the most, you know? Really? Because, I mean, you must see it a lot now. Mm. You work with a lot of businesses, but... Um, you know, you can instantly see a winning culture. You know, you look at sports teams and you look at um, even retail environments yeah, yeah. And, and certain things. You can see where there's winners and stuff that happens and you can see the opposite, can't you? You know, mm. when certain people just can't catch a break. And I think if um, if you're able to create that within your business, um, it's really good. And obviously, you know, talking about the actual business itself, it's just about those personal relationships, isn't it? It's choosing the right people to work with people. You know, do they complement each other? How do you pick the right people, mate? Um... How have, you got better, how have you got better at that? Yeah, learning as always. You know, you've got to look at... I think the character fit's really important. 
Okay, how do you how do you how do you look for that and measure that and look for that in an interview? Uh, well, you you got to know your people first of all, yeah, really sure. on a good level, and then after that, I think you know, I, I think you can get a lot from an interview asking people the right questions to really get them to open up, and I think that's as important as if they can bill or not. You know, mm. I don't care if you can put tons of days on the board if if you're going to be, you know, I use that word cancer to the business. If you're going to write it from the inside mm. out then that's no good to me. You know, I'd rather you have a moderate biller that's going to complement the business and everyone works together because otherwise it's only a matter of time before that all comes. How have you got crumbles. better at spot, spotting cancer, mate? I think you just, um, you learn from your mistakes, don't you, when, you, mm. when you've hired some bad calls. I mean, generally, number one rule, you know, if I don't like them, then there's a good chance my team won't like them. Okay. Bear in mind, I hired all of my team. Um, over the years, I haven't hired many people I don't like, but like everybody, when you want, when you want to build a business, you hire some people that you're not so sure on. And that that's hasn't worked out pretty quickly. Yeah, that becomes pretty evident. Um, so I think if you like them, if they fit within the team, I guess if you're not sure, you can bring them in. But usually after a while, you can get a good, you know, the social test is a good one, isn't it? If you were to go to a pint or you go bowling, would they get on with everybody? Would, would they would fit you do, in? Would you do that quite a bit? Um, no, not not pre-hire, but I think oh, just you'd hypothetical. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Could, could you go for a drink with them? Could you chill, take lunch with them? Would you be would you run out of things to say pretty quickly? Or, yeah, yeah. or would you be able to engage in it? I think if they're on that level... If you get on with them, and in my case, obviously I hired all my team, then they're going to get on with me and I'm going to get on with them most mm. of the time. And I think it's not like a popularity contest. Different people have different agendas. But I think as long as they're complementing your current cohort of energy yeah. um, rather than dragging it down. How, how achievable is that when you get, like, you've got a pretty big team now, right? Surely that uh, per, yeah, the person, yeah. surely if you think, like, surely the person you bring in, how, how like, can they be, can they get on with 13, 14 people? Uh, yeah, definitely get on with. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying you're going to be best buddies. You know, yeah. you know, I'm sure everyone's you know not short mates when they arrive, so they, they don't necessarily need that. But I think you know, can they get on? Can they work together? Can they share common goals? Can they can they complement the business together? Mm. Absolutely. Some people will get on with some people more than others, and that's fine. And then, like you say, if you've worked in a business with high turnover, as somebody drops out of that, um, mm. somebody leaves or whatever, they drop out of the process. The, the culture changes again, doesn't it? Yeah. If, it's a, if it's a big ego or a big presence or yeah. maybe a, a not so good one moves, things change and relationships change. And I think, you know, I find that really fascinating. So mm. for me as a manager, I think you're always juggling that, you know, you're trying to tweak it and, you know, things like seating plan is quite a big thing for me. We, we regularly don't get too attached to our seat in my office. I don't I don't like that where... Why is it? Why? Why? Because I think, you know, you get too comfortable, don't you? You get sat next to the same guy mm. you sat always. And I think if you get a top biller sat next to the top biller, they'll do their own thing. You stick a top biller next to a trainee biller, he will act different to her, yeah, um, to so him or true. her, and vice versa. So I'm always moving the seats around. It's like it's like Jenga in my office, you know. Uh, at least once every couple of months, we move seats. Really? Yeah, even me. Yeah, I move wherever I need to go. Mm. You know, out of the good spots and sit in the corners, or whatever. Uh, but I think every time you do that, what I always feel is move the seats. What happens? Instant energy change. Instantly. Really? Instantly, mate. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Everyone moves the desk, move the trolley over the the dress and the doors and yeah, the yeah. drawers and moves it over to a different location and the energy changes. Sometimes yeah. better, sometimes worse. Move it around again. You know. Yeah. As long as you said from the outset, I always say, you know, this is how this is how we have it. So don't. It's not a big deal. You know, I've, I've been to some place and do that and you get things thrown at you. Mate. You move, yeah, yeah. Can't move something. <laughs> but as long as like the culture set like that, people look forward to it. You know, I get people asking me, like, when are we having a move around? I've got two. Yeah, no, I like yeah, that. So little things like that. You okay, anything else it. like that then that could be? I think that's I think that's a really interesting, um, unique point. Is there anything else that you've noticed that has had a yeah. quite cool, interesting impact on? culture yeah um in your team things yeah um empowering people stuff like that specifically asking people to look over someone and mm. you know putting an arm around them whether it's emotional support or whether mm. they're going through a tough time or you know i think just playing those relationships not like i'm trying to play like voodoo and control everything mm. but just knowing when you know that guy over there could do really well i see he's going down the wrong path he's yeah. not making the right choices you know put someone around him who you know is a good egg that could definitely rinse him in the right you know, mm. in the right way, see if we can bring him back on track, and then he'll feel better about it. He'll respect the person that helped him, and mm. you know, you can't get it all right. But I think that's the moving beast is to try and manage those pieces of the jigsaw as much as you can. Okay. Um, but crucially, if you do get a bad egg, you know, and I've had them and I've seen them, and I'm sure you've worked with a few. Mm. You know, as fast as is sensible, you've got to remove that or change remove. it. Yeah, yeah, in you know, sensible way, but yeah, yeah. Okay, mate. Yeah. Secure, survive, and thrive. Yeah. This that's your, your fault that's your, your fault that title <laughs> <laughs> this is your book mate it is yeah it's quite cool isn't it why did you write it yeah 
I get, that's the one question I get asked the most, actually. What, what, I know it's, mate, like, yeah. what, what comes to mind when someone asks you, why, why did you write this book? Right, so I've been, well, I've been asked it a few times. So, number one, because I kept, obviously, in my job when I train consultants and I do a lot, I've been saying it a lot, like, oh, I should write a book one day, like, you know, ego, yeah. like, I should write a book one day. Yeah, yeah. Um, number two, because, obviously, I see a lot of common traits for me in my temp sector and stuff like that, and I try to be as well informed as possible but yeah. a lot of people walk down the wrong path quite often make the same mistakes and stuff like that so there's a lot of common things that occur um, but probably finally it sounds a bit mishy mushy really but um, you know recruitment's been pretty good to me mate so yeah. you know I've been able to live a reasonably good life go some nice places do some nice things and you know like I said to him to start you know I'm not a graduate I'm not you know got the best thing on paper um, and I've been able to do really well for it and I genuinely thought you know I don't know if I'll do this forever, you know. What do you I'll... put that down to? Do you think the core of why, like, how um, you've been able to create that for yourself? Um, just because you know, recruitment has a lot to give if you've got a lot to offer it, don't you? You know, there's there's a lot of opportunity financially and being in the right places and stuff like that. So, you know, it's done really well for me now. I've got over the hurdle, um, and you know, like I say, I don't know if I'm going to be a recruiter when I'm 50 or whatever. Yeah. So, I think if I could help one more person, kind of live the you know, the good things that I've had and do the, play, the things that I've had and it helps somebody who's struggling who, who might be getting fired to not get fired or or to, to start to build well, then uh, I think it's pretty cool. That That's, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah. honestly, mate, I, th- I think that's great and I think what you're also doing then is actually giving people reality of what, what's involved yeah, in recruitment. Yeah, yeah, because I've been, I mean, I've been pretty brutal in it, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you've got to be in that. Like. Yeah, I mean, I, because it's all the things I didn't get told and I was naive enough to believe in all of that and, where where I can I confirm what I believe is true and where I where I can I deny you know the rubbish you're told and and set the record straight as I see it um mm. so yeah and that's it you know I like to be always challenged I like to be doing stuff and where I've got on top of my game here in my current business I'm running I'm like okay cool I'm going to I'm going to write a book and okay. you know I want to do things so just just to just to let everyone know listening so like so how you structure this is secure so that's getting your job in recruitment yeah um, survive that's surviving your first six months. yeah so it's I, I pictured it as being your intro to recruitment so secure survive thrive so like you say getting into recruitment which is um, how to understand the things if you know nothing about it yeah. if you haven't even thought about it before or if you're only just looking at it, you know things like how to apply for a job where to yeah. find the jobs common mistakes in interviews how to structure your CV if you haven't got the perfect CV like I have yeah. um all those kind of things survive for me was a big thing and you know I've heard, I've heard some of your previous podcasts some guys did quite alright and had an easy ride and yeah, some yeah. had a horrible time like me so I genuinely call it survive you know mm. um, you've you got to get through that period that's basically through your probation for me mm. um, and again doing the right things at the right times and little tips and things tips and tricks that will help bide you time if you genuinely want to do the job but perhaps you're not where you need to be yet Yeah. Um, and then thrive is probably you know, probably the bit that I'm most proud of. You know, it's the mm. bit where uh, I genuinely believe, like I was saying to you before we, we started this thing, you know, everybody should set themselves the objective of becoming top biller if that's your, you know, if you're going to be a biller, you may as well be the top biller or at yeah. least shoot for it. Um, where, where do you think most people fall short in, in, in getting to that point? Uh, I think a lot is mentality, mate. You know, really? I hear a lot now, like it's um, acceptable to not be that good. Mm. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way like you know there's plenty of space for a good solid bill up but I think because we start pitching it as medium then a lot of people only achieve small do you know what I mean yeah I like that so my mentality is if you're going to come into recruitment like most do to earn good money that only comes when you deliver good billings unless you're going to do you know management and all that kind of thing but um, so if that's the case you definitely should try and get there and from day one if, you, if you're thinking about applying recruitment or you just started today that would be my my message to you, man, shoot, shoot for the top, shoot, shoot for the for top the biller, top. find out who the top biller is, make that your goal and, and start working towards it. Because in my in my experience, in this business, Teacher Act is a very successful business. You know, we've been going, you know, 15, 16 years. Yeah. The top billers there are the top billers in the industry for, for years. I mean, they were doing six, seven times the billings that I was doing in my previous firm and I thought I was good then. And what, what would you put that down to mindset? Yeah, a lot of it's mindset, yeah. It's just simply, yeah. you know... It, I tell you the simplest thing I always say like the sales achievers club whatever you want to call it the sales club in my last business um, was exactly double in this new business so I came through the door and I was like man I don't know how I can do that but I'm already in the sales wait, club wait, 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 wait. sorry what do you mean as in like what you saw in your last job was yeah like, you know a lot of places have like get to X level and you bec- you can get treated oh, like like it was doubled what you need to get yeah, it, the, the, the figure was double wow so I was like 
mate, I want to know that. how you do that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm maxed out now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And then okay. what happens is you, you just, um, yeah, well, you know yeah. about the paradigm thing, you know, you, your paradigms, like how you think about things just get moved, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Your, your goals get so it's changed. It's like the, the four minute mile, isn't it? Classic. Yeah, same thing. And like yeah, that two hour, two hour yeah. marathon recently. Um, so I think all the time you do that. So I think starting from the clear outset, you know, some of you will become top billers, some of you mm. won't. But I think having that clear objective, if that's what you want to do, you should shoot for it, man, because it, it can be done. And even if you've got long established top billers, like if you worked in the medium sized firms, like like we did at the beginning, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes those guys have been there for years. Um, with the well, right if you've hunger. got like, no one around you like that has that mentality, that's difficult, isn't it? Then, you know then you've got to be that mentality, you know, if that yeah. is you, yeah. I mean, there's no shortage of inspiration on LinkedIn, is there? I mean, yeah. if, or if in you this book, mate. Like that, uh, or in this book, mate. Or in this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think, no, obviously we're, we're all so well connected now. No, yeah. I, I, think you, I think it's really interesting what you're saying, Matt. I think yeah. it's very easy to say now that recruitment's a long game. Yeah. It's like, you've got to be patient, yeah. which you have, but at the same time, yeah. it's like, let, let's not, obviously, yeah, put, put down the, the sort of mark as to where we can yeah. get to and, it's never going to be the same as it was like... How, I, I disagree, you, you know man. I, mean? I, I, I disagree fully. And I think, you know, I take that point a lot of people, you know, because I think it's there for the taking, man. There's always a top biller. There's always a top biller. And even, yeah. even in a declining market, there's always there's always more to get. And I think that mindset to go after it from the beginning, like I said before, worst case scenario, you don't get it. or well, you become number three. It's not too bad, is it? You know? Yeah, I really like that. Um, and then the following year, you'll get it because usually top billers have their place at the top. Mm. You know, if, if they've been long standing for two, three years and you're really hungry and you get number two, number three, I guarantee you, year two, you're going to take it if you're hungrier. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's a lot of that. So that's that's my fabric of how I think about sales and how I approach it. And that's a lot what the, mm. the Thrive section so what, is. Yeah, what, so what, what do you say are the sort of key, key parts of the Thrive thing that you think people will most benefit from? Because um, we're going through it now and I think there's some. Some really interesting pits that you've got to bit continue to develop yourself. Yeah, it's a continue and to like consistency yourself. is key. Yeah. But like, what, what would you say are some of the sort of key things in this I thrive section that you think a lot um, of people get value out of? Well, the biggest thing normally is the gatekeeper section because a lot of people, yeah. yeah, I think it's a lost art, mate. And no one knows how to be mm. gatekeepers anymore. So, um, yeah, so getting getting DMs or contacts on the phone, and I know that's harder or easier depending on where, what sector you're in, but. There's a load of good stuff in there. I think there's three chapters on that because I wrote a lot about that. Well, how to get through gatekeeping. How physically to get people on the phone, yeah. Is it? I love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bad what do you think? What do you think people have gotten, like, um, what's the word? Yeah, they've forgotten, like... I've, uh, like I said, I think, uh, I think it's like the skills of, uh, are getting lost and they're getting forgotten to be passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, where we're getting that digital age now where it's more acceptable to send an email, to leave a voicemail, yeah. to pass a message. I think we're giving ourselves escape routes out when actually it's not that hard, mate. I mean, yes, it takes time. Yes, it takes a bit of mm. effort, but you've got to really put your head into it and apply it. But it can be done, you know, and mm. it's not that hard with the right effort. So I think, you know, tackling it from that that attitude that you can get people on the phone. Yeah. Then uh, I talk about control, which is really important for me. You know, a recruiter on the phone, don't care how new or experienced you are, that person wants to speak to someone who's in control of the job, who will be able to deliver for them. They yeah. want to know that you're not an amateur and they don't care if it's your first day or, you know, 10 years deep. They want to feel like they're speaking to someone who knows what they're doing. Um I talk about what I call the yo-yo effect, which is quite common where people are early in their doors where they have one good week, one bad week, or one good month, one bad month, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, about consistency, getting consistency over to your results. Um, mindset, because obviously, you know, as, as you know, you know, you can have days that can really break you. So th there's a lot of stuff in there just about my attitude, how I think about that, how to get the most out of the job, you know. And I've got, re you know, really good feedback about it, actually, mate, you know. Honestly, man, I, I think um, I think it's I think it's great, mate. I think um, I mean a bit a big driver for me was was with the podcast is, is very much pretty much what you said, mate. If it if it can help one person, like I mean, I definitely didn't have a ten year career in recruitment, mate. <laughs> 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 but like again, like yeah. as as everybody knows, I, I got sold the recruitment dream, which yeah. was I be for Rolex and all that, and yeah. none of that happened, yeah. right? Yeah. And and I think there's, I think I love the fact, and what, what's really exciting, I think, is that more and more people are willing to share, like yourself. Yeah. And again, like this took time, took investment of your time. Mate, a lot of do you know time, what I mean? And money. I think, again, exactly. And for you to be willing to do that, I think it's great, mate. And I think, yeah. um, definitely be proud, mate. But I, I, I genuinely think, I think, think like, you know, mate, there's enough market out there for all of us. We, 100%. We don't I think need, that's got to be the mindset. I don't believe, and I swear this is a few people, and I, I'm not just saying yeah. stuff, 
you know, I don't have, you don't have to lose for me to win. We can both win. 100%. And if we can work together, we, we can both win better, you know. So, yeah, totally right. Yeah, I mean, that's just common sense, I think, you know. Yeah. I think as well, like with that, totally agree. I think where I really relate with that is like when I, when I have sort of had the genius decision with my colleagues to start creating yeah. content and that. And yeah. the first pushback straight away was that sort of, scarcity mindset of well yeah. oh no what if our what if our competitors yeah. see and then they still our clients well it's like you've got to back yourself in yeah 100 percent, mate yeah do you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. you got back yourself. Um, yeah okay mate so besides the book then yeah what are you excited about mate what's what's going on uh just in your world oh, just um, like future mate you know i think you know mm. there's opportunity there every day and then you know, i'll talk about topical but like the brexit stuff i don't even know what that's gonna mean but i think it's opportunity isn't it mm. you know things are going to change in market in everybody's market some are going to contract some are going to grow and i think there's, there's just opportunity out there all the time, you know, and as, I, as I'm getting better at my craft and, you know, my guys are getting more experienced and, you know, I just think there's... Optimistic? Know, yeah, I, I'm always optimistic, mate, you know, about I business. Like I think there's there's always stuff out there to get, you know, mm. and now I've finished, finished that, I want to find something else cool to do, you know? Hey. Yeah. Okay, mate. Yeah. So, yep. um, what I was going to say, basically, yep. we discussed before this, didn't we? We did, yeah. So me and Stephen were talking... And Stephen um, has sort of very kindly said that he's willing to ultimately give away some of his wisdom, besides his podcast, obviously. Yeah, obviously. I will yeah. give away some of his wisdom in, yeah. in his Secure, Survive, Thrive uh, yeah. book um, in the in the shape of a um, period of discounting the price yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. So what we're going to do is when, the, when this podcast goes live, which yep. will be um, whenever it is, but when it does go live... The twenty four hours for twenty four hours yeah. that it is live the first day. Yeah. This this book. Amazon give you uh, a certain amount of flexibility over it, which isn't complete, but they mm. definitely allow you to discount it for a certain period of yeah, time. So, so, we, so we'll discount it. Yeah, we'll get discount it. Yeah. So discount, discount. Yeah. We're gonna discount this book. Yeah. Well, you're gonna. No, I'm not. Yep. We. <laughs> we. <yeah>. You. <laughs> you're gonna discount this book for twenty four hours. Yep. When this when this podcast is released. Yep. So. If you've enjoyed this episode, you've enjoyed what Stephen yeah. had to say, there's obviously a lot more in this book. You can obviously yeah. cover so much an hour or so. Yeah. Um, then you've got the opportunity to, to buy this book yeah. um, for a discounted price. And I'll put the link to, um, obviously, to, to purchase this in, in, the, in the episode notes. Good, thank and you. When, I, when I share it on LinkedIn as well, I'll put it yeah. in there. Um, and then the other thing that we wanted to do, yeah. right, was obviously you've got a couple of books that like yeah. extra that are I've just lying some- around. Physical. You're an author now. You've just got books lying around that you can give away. From a bookstore. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> there's no one turned up. I got um, so yeah. how much with this? Five of them, is yeah, it? Yeah, I've got five copies right here. So um, we'll work out how we do it. But yeah. I think we're going to... I'm going to do a post. And mm. when this, this goes live, uh, you, we're trying to work out how to do this before. Yeah, we? yeah, yeah. If you head over to it and just give it a like, and then um, basically I'll pick some people at yeah, random. Yeah, so Stephen is obviously... We're going to get a picture. Yeah. Stephen's going to post that the podcast is live. Yeah. Yeah. And basically... If you like Stephen's post, yeah, um, you are then going to pick a person at random. Five at random, yeah. Five people at random who liked your post, yeah. Are you going to deliver it personally? You know, if they're local, up, yeah. You're going to turn up involved. their door, yeah, if they're local, and go, Stephen Joseph, I've got yeah. a book for you. I'll sign it for no charge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not. If yeah, you don't want cool. To. So to make that crystal clear, yeah. Um, where, yeah. So where, where, when it, when this goes live, yeah. Um, and this is published, there's going to be a, an opportunity to, to get this book at a discounted price. Yep. And then um, when you obviously share with everyone that the podcast has gone live, yeah. Um, if you like uh, Stephen's post, yeah. Then there's going to be an opportunity to to get some free to get uh, to get a free copy. Yeah. 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 Wicked, mate. Um, last question. Yeah. If you could communicate to every single recruiter out there, yeah, they'd listen. They take on your advice. Yeah. Pressure. Could be a phrase, a word. Yeah. What would you say, mate? Um, I, I, I have that, you know, um, the, the biggest thing that I've kind of learned and I say to everyone, and it's not my phrase as usual, but I repeat a lot, is what you lack in skill make up for in numbers. That's kind of mm. that core thing. I know it's not new, it's not cliche, but um, if you're not that good, if the guy next to you is twice as good, dial twice as much and you'll balance him out. That's mm. kind of my core message and then if that's the case then the gap between you will come down quickly you, you'll learn faster and things like that so that's kind of my you could put me on the spot I think that's what I'd say but beyond that I think you know if you're not top better than you want to be you know genuinely work towards it man you know don't mm. let anyone tell you it can't be done don't let anyone mm. you know put doubts on you it can be done and I've seen some long standing top billers get knocked off their pegs and mm. some guys that were definitely underdogs do really well so 
um, if you in your heart think you could be really good or deliver really well, but keep going, totally keep going, right. yeah, keep going, yeah, keep going, and, and like Great extend message. that, you know. Shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I'll, res- I'll respond. I'm happy to help, you know. Legend, mate. Stephen, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank pleasure. you. Pleasure. Thank you, mate.